So today, Dr. Scholz, we're talking about MRI and PSMA. Now with this huge new advancement of PSMA coming out, you know, we see that it can pick up prostate cancer all throughout the body, but also inside of the prostate. So how is MRI applicable now that we have PSMA and really what do patients go for? And honestly, what's covered by insurance. So can you kind of talk about what these new advancements have done and how what patients should really look for as far as getting prostate imaging. The world of MRI, which we've had now since about 2015, is maybe a little underappreciated because it hasn't been as adopted as quickly and as completely, even in 2023, as I think it should be. It's true that PSMA has been such a radical advancement that the industry is still trying to figure out how to use this wonderful new tool. And PSMA, although it's not covered by insurance, can be used as a substitute for um, trying to figure out if uh, an abnormality seen on MRI is cancerous or not. The typical standard, of course, is to go in and stick a needle in there. But PSMA will pick up 90% of prostate cancers, so we can use it to investigate what's going on in the prostate if we have the financial resources people can afford to do that. But MRI has been a great opportunity for people to get less needle biopsies. About a million men go, undergo random needle biopsy every year in the United States. And these are large bore needles uh, where they um, stick these in through the rectum into the prostate a dozen times. And MRI it, it can reduce the amount of needle sticks by a factor of 10. That is a lot less unpleasant and it's a lot less dangerous. The incidence of infections, serious infections that result in hospitalization goes way down when you do an MRI directed biopsy rather than a random biopsy. Why is this so so pivotal? Well for the first time with good quality MRIs we can see where the problem is and that was dealt with in the past by sticking the needles everywhere and hoping to find an answer, but with now with MRI testing, we can get by with just two or three needle sticks, and studies clearly show that that approach, using MRI-directed biopsies rather than using uh, random biopsies, uh, is more accurate. In addition to cutting down the risk of infections, it also cuts down the risk of being diagnosed with low-grade prostate cancer, which doesn't need treatment. Who needs that diagnosis? So you want someone to tell you you've got cancer when it's really a harmless entity that no one's going to treat anyway? No, of course you don't. So MRIs cut down by 50% the chance of being diagnosed with low-grade cancer, and they cut down by 90% the number of needle biopsies that are needed to make a diagnosis. Before I get to my next question, I just want to remind you that you can join our cause. We want to get these videos out to people all over the world, and you can help us by going to pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to this video on MRI and PSMA. So what is the sequencing then if someone is diagnosed with prostate cancer? Should they get an MRI first? Should they get a PSMA first? So the sequencing in the United States is uh, generally agreed upon, though not universally, that you get a PSA. And if the PSA is above two and a half when you're young or if it's above four when you're old. Typically, I've been recommended to get a random biopsy, which I believe is a big mistake. The next step should be to get a quality three Tesla multi-parametric MRI and see if there's any uh, lesions in the prostate that, uh, that should be further investigated. These lesions are numbered from one to five. If there are no lesions, three or higher, then uh, all you have to do is get another MRI in a year and make sure no new lesions are showing up. If there are lesions that are three or higher, then a targeted biopsy needs to be done. And there's a variety of different ways to do targeted biopsies. You can ask your doctor to look at the MRI and do a cognitive fusion biopsy. You can ask for a, a fusion biopsy done with ultrasound. You can have an in-bore biopsy. You can go for a micro um, ultrasound directed biopsy. You can go for a color Doppler ultrasound directed biopsy. There's a lot of ways to do targeting. but Targeting with just two or three cores, as you can imagine, is far less dangerous than repeatedly sticking needles through the rectum a dozen or more times. It's well known that the risk of infection is going to be, you know, three or four times higher 
when you do multiple needle sticks as opposed to just uh, two or three. So when I hear that list of options when it comes to getting these targeted biopsies, my brain goes, okay, well, what's the most accurate, but also what's the most available? And, you know, do patients need to go to an academic center to get the one that is, you know, going to target it the best? Well, how do you look at that? The most accurate would be the in-bore biopsies where they do the biopsy right in the MRI. The most convenient would probably be a cognitive fusion biopsy. Sometimes you can tell on the MRI there's something right right on the back of the gland, it's not small. It'll probably be even visible on the ultrasound. And so that's a simple outpatient prostate uh, biopsy done in the doctor's office. Between those two extremes, maybe the one that is gonna be convenient and accurate will be what are called fusion biopsies where different centers have invested in expensive software that they can load the MRI image into their ultrasound and while they're doing the ultrasound, the software will tell them where to stick the needle. Even though they might not be able to see it with the ultrasound, the MRI information is incorporated in the software. That's called a fusion biopsy. All of them are appropriate in different situations. Um, if people have really small anterior, that means away from the rectum lesions, uh, I recommend an in-bore biopsy. That's the most accurate. If you have a larger lesion toward the rectal wall where most lesions occur, cognitive biopsy, uh, micro-ultrasound, or color Doppler ultrasound would be perfectly fine. To, in those ambiguous situations, maybe a smaller lesion that's posterior, a fusion biopsy would be best. A couple of years ago, the PCRI spent a lot of its time doing a campaign to let people know Know about 3T MRIs versus 1.5 Teslas. Now, we have PSMA now, now we have 3T MRIs, but is 1.5 still being used when it comes to MRI, using, you know, MRIs for patients? Or is 3T across the board? Or do patients still need to ask, you know, the facility, is this a 3T machine? If they're doing routine 1.5 Tesla MRIs uh, at the facility that is proposing to have this multi-parametric MRI, then go to a different facility. To me, they're out of date. There is, however, one subgroup of people that should get a 1.5 Tesla MRI, and those are people that have had hip uh, replacements where there's large amounts of metal near where the prostate is. Those patients will need a 1.5, what's called a low field strength MRI. Otherwise, there's gonna be so much distortion that the quality of the image will be degraded in a 3T. So with all the technical advancement that we have with these fusion biopsies and targeted biopsies, why in 2023 are we still seeing that random needle biopsies are still so popular? Well, they have a lot of momentum from the past. Uh, they were a big breakthrough in 1987. PSA was FDA approved the same year as random biopsies were approved. It was a gigantic advance because before that, men were being diagnosed with metastatic prostate cancer. They didn't have a way to investigate what was going on inside the prostate with any accuracy. So there's appropriate reverence for this big breakthrough that has uh, really advanced the way we understand prostate cancer. Uh, the other problems, and the reason that we haven't made this transition to 3T MRIs right after high PSA, is that uh, the MRI readouts that are provided are sometimes a little difficult to understand unless you really train yourself in understanding it. So the biopsy information speaks in a language that the urologists understand and they've used for decades. The MRI information is new to them, and so there's a, a repurposing that has to happen. Another real problem, of course, is that urologists are paid to do random biopsies, and they're not paid to order MRIs. That, that revenue goes to an outside facility. So the financial incentives are also against this transition occurring. Now, patients are learning, my gosh, I'd much rather have a scan than have a large bore needle inserted through my rectum a dozen times. And so people that get online and they become aware, they start to insist on getting an MRI before doing any kind of a biopsy, let alone a random biopsy. But doctors are busy and they've been taught in how to do random biopsies. It's still considered a standard. And it's only the patients that, that push for MRI are, that are going to be uh, oftentimes given the opportunity to use this technology. So today you heard Dr. Scholz and I talk about MRIs and targeted biopsy. The main point I want you to walk away with is if you don't have a physician who is suggesting a targeted biopsy versus a random needle biopsy, maybe you get a second opinion or a third opinion. Find out what your medical insurance covers. Maybe it's an HMO, maybe it's a PPO, maybe it's you know Medicare. Find out what your options are. Find out if you have a local center that's doing you know any of the modalities that Dr. Scholz talked about when it comes to having a fusion targeted biopsy or any of the other types. The bottom line is, if you could have less needles, less risk of infection, less discomfort, 
that's a better situation for you. I think oftentimes when people get diagnosed with cancer, you know, when you're just getting into it, maybe you don't see the perspective that I have where I see that people go into these situations and they kind of just go with whatever card they're dealt. That's not really optimal. The optimal thing is for you to have the best quality care at all times. Now, I understand that that's maybe a big picture, like, you know, perfect scenario, but that doesn't mean we don't try. So talk to your physicians, get second opinions, and get a targeted biopsy if you can. Research the centers around you, see how far you're willing to travel to get the type of technology that you need. And if you need help, you can contact our helpline at pcri.org forward slash helpline. They can help you find information around you as well. But please remember that you're a valuable person and that you matter and that, you know, just because somebody says go do something, question it a little bit. You know, trust your physicians. They have your best interests, but make sure you're getting the right person who really has your best interest at heart. We really appreciate that you watch these videos. Thank you for trusting us. And don't forget, talk to your doctor and advocate for yourself. You're not alone, and we hope you have a great week.